The James Webb Space Telescope is at the forefront of cosmic exploration, revealing unprecedented discoveries. It has produced the most detailed infrared image of the universe, discovered the oldest galaxies ever observed, and identified the furthest known active supermassive black hole. These achievements underscore the need to carefully analyze our observations before forming conclusions, as they could challenge and reshape existing theories about the early universe's formation. Are we on the brink of uncovering the cosmic blueprint that has shaped the vast expanse of the universe? We're finding galaxies in the Dark Ages. We had no idea, no idea. And I'm told the lead researcher was so shocked by this, he spit out his coffee when he realized what kind of data he had on his hands. Either we don't understand how galaxies are formed, of course we don't fully understand it, that's why we built the telescope, but all of our understanding about matter and energy that tells us that there should be a dark ages, something had to change. We gotta go back and adjust that somehow in ways we don't know or understand yet. Or some new kind of object, unlike any other objects we've ever seen, had no trouble forming in the dark ages. Or us placing it in the dark ages is somehow flawed. We're basing this on just pictures of these galaxies and what their properties are via pictures. What we are waiting for now is we wanna get a spectrum of those galaxies, of those objects. Let me not even call them galaxies because they could be something else. You can tell us what chemical elements are there. So if we get the spectrum of these objects, we'll know what they're made of. We will even be able to better place them in distance, maybe there's something contaminating our estimate of its distance, and maybe they're really on the edge of the Dark Ages, but somehow they're masquerading as though they're a little farther away, deep within the Dark Ages. With the James Webb Telescope, we are not just observing distant galaxies with remarkable clarity, we are ushering in a new era of cosmic discovery. This powerful telescope is specifically engineered to study the formation of galaxies at the universe's inception, using infrared light to peer over 13 billion years into the past. This capability, as noted by astrophysicist Neil deGrasse Tyson, allows us to view the universe in a way we've never seen before. The JWST thus represents a quantum leap in our understanding of the cosmos, fulfilling high expectations and sparking immense excitement about what lies ahead in our exploration of the universe. Is it possible that the James Webb Space Telescope holds the answer to the long-standing mystery of how the universe began? The Big Bang Theory, which is the leading explanation for the origin of the universe, describes a rapid expansion from a hot, dense state. While Webb cannot directly observe the moment of the Big Bang, it helps us observe the aftermath of this event. Webb can also provide us with empirical evidence that can either support or challenge current cosmological models, including the Big Bang Theory. It is designed to observe light from the earliest stars and galaxies, which formed a few hundred million years after the Big Bang. By studying these early celestial objects, astronomers can gather more information about the conditions and processes in the early universe. This is the way science has worked since basically the year 1600, where Galileo sort of starts codifying what people knew probably should be happening, but no one really did it in large scale. If you have an idea about something, then you test it multiple ways and get other people to test it. And if the tests give you consistent results, you have a new understanding of the universe. When that happens, that knowledge of the universe doesn't go away. It doesn't get undone, what happens typically is you have a deeper understanding of the universe in which that understanding gets embedded. And you realize that you only understood a small part of a larger whole. But the small parts you did understand, where you had multiple experiments that confirmed it, that doesn't change. As we delve deeper into the capabilities of the James Webb Space Telescope, we encounter its pivotal role in one of astronomy's most enduring mysteries, the universe's rate of expansion. Central to this puzzle is the Hubble constant, a critical value that helps us determine how fast the universe is growing. This constant has long been a subject of debate, 
with theoretical models and telescopic observations often presenting conflicting figures. There are two different measurements of the age of the universe. One of them comes from supernovae. When they explode, they're brighter than the galaxy they're contained in. That's how much energy they're putting out. So you can see supernovae basically to the edge of the universe. All right. So they form a good sort of what we call standard candle. All right. Supernovas have commonality among them. You see where one explodes. How bright does it get? How quickly does it drop off in brightness? You calibrate that. You can get a distance to that supernova. Okay. And by virtue of the expansion rate of the universe, you get an age of the universe. There's another method you get by observing the cosmic microwave background. It does not use supernova. Each of those are highly precise methods, yet they do not agree with each other on the size or the age of the universe by a little bit. And you can say, oh, it's just a little bit. No, the, the uncertainties in each of these measurements precludes the other answer from being correct. You can have two numbers. Is it 13.75, 13.83? Well, who cares? Between friends, those two measurements are tight. Then that's a problem. It's a scientific problem, and it's called tension, cosmological tension. And it's unresolved at this point. Last I checked, we, don't ha we can't resolve the difference between these two methods. So either we don't understand supernovae, or we don't understand the cosmic background, but we think we do, and therefore we're getting the wrong precision in the answer, or something else is going on that might involve both of them. Or maybe to think about the age of the universe is a question that doesn't have meaning unto itself. By examining these stars with its advanced infrared capabilities, JWST is expected to yield more accurate measurements of cosmic distances, thereby offering a potential resolution to the Hubble constant conundrum. As these observations continue, astronomers around the world eagerly await the insights that JWST will bring, hopeful that it will help reconcile the discrepancies between theoretical predictions and observational data. The Webb Telescope's placement at the second Lagrange point, L2, roughly 1.5 million kilometers from Earth, is critically strategic. At this unique position, the telescope benefits from a stable orbit, courtesy of the equilibrium in gravitational forces exerted by the Earth and Sun. This stability is essential for precise and consistent observations. Moreover, as highlighted by Tyson, its location on the side of Earth opposite the Sun is a significant advantage. This positioning ensures an unobstructed view of the cosmos, free from the potential interference of Earth's light and heat, thereby providing an ideal setting for the web to observe the most ancient and distant cosmic objects in unparalleled clarity. There's a feature of the James Webb Space Telescope that I haven't seen talked about much. People only just think of it as some next big telescope that's out there in space bringing us badass images, but there are certain engineering scientific features that are unique with it that I think are worth calling out. Unlike Hubble, which orbited Earth 360 miles up, this thing is parked a million miles away in the opposite direction of the sun from the Earth. It and the Earth are orbiting the sun together, and so, it, so basically, if you look back in the Earth direction, the sun will always be there. It has some motion where it is, but it's not going to drift away from that location, even though there's some movement within the location. The, the point is, occasionally, Earth will block the sun. The value of this is you always know which way the sun is. If you're going to take a picture of something that's dim, you either have to illuminate it yourself which we really can't do for the early universe, that doesn't work. <laughs> or you can take a long exposure to allow the light to accumulate. But while you're taking that long exposure, you can't jiggle the camera. We can't take a flash picture of the universe. So we have to open the exposure for a long time. Uh, different bands of the electromagnetic spectrum tell us different things about the universe. Right, so if you're going to do that, you need telescopes that specialize in the chosen band. Only a small fraction is visible light. And so, so now you're going to say, what in the universe gives off infrared light? And you find out that things that have kind of any temperature at all will radiate in the infrared. 
And when the thing gets hot enough, it's not only giving off infrared, it'll begin to also give off visible light. But if the thing is cool enough, it's primarily only going to be giving you infrared. Suppose you want to see infrared, all right? And by the way, infrared doesn't make it very nicely through Earth's atmosphere. So here's the cool thing about the James Webb Telescope. It has a special reflective surface on its mirrors that are tuned to reflect infrared with very high efficiency. While the primary mission of the James Webb Space Telescope is to gaze into the distant past, observing some of the universe's first stars and galaxies, its fresh perspective on our own solar system has been nothing short of awe-inspiring. The James Webb Space Telescope recently focused on Uranus, an ice giant unique for its sideways rotation. It captured detailed images of the planet's rings, moons and atmospheric features, including storms and a seasonal polar cap. Uranus's distinctive tilt of approximately 98 degrees leads to extreme seasonal variations, with each pole experiencing either constant sunlight or darkness for around 21 years. As 2023 ends, we look toward 2024 with growing excitement. The journey of the James Webb Space Telescope is just gathering momentum, embarking on a vast expedition of discovery that surpasses even our greatest expectations. The upcoming year is ripe with the potential to dramatically shift our understanding of the cosmos, sparking a renewed sense of curiosity and wonder in astronomers and enthusiasts around the world. <laughs>